جو بھی سوال ہو جو بھی ہو جو بھی ہو جو بھی ہو A podcast by the Game Changer Project by Marthoma Youth Ministry of Mumbai featuring Rev. Dr. Joe Joseph Kuruvilla. Hello and welcome to yet another episode of Joe B. Ho podcast with Rev. Dr. Joe Joseph Kuruvilla Achin who's been so gracious enough to answer the questions of youth and uh, we have this podcast so that people can share their struggles which they cannot share with anybody else. In the youth ministry in Mumbai, we have felt that there are so many youngsters with so many questions inside them and many a times we don't find where to put up those questions, who to get the answers from, who is the right person to ask these things. And that's why we have this anonymous question answer program where you could send your questions without revealing your identity and we have a seasoned and experienced counsellor, Achin Reverend Dr. Joe Joseph Kurula. who is working as a counselor in the Nirnamaraman Diocese Counseling Department who is with us hello joe achan hi mathi joe achan how are you i'm all right i'm all right. how about you good how was good. your flight yesterday yeah really nice and looking forward to this uh, session of podcast i'm enjoying every moment of this podcast we are so glad you're enjoying it talking about uh, joe achan once again to remember remind you uh, joe achan is from mumbai he was born and brought up here which church were you part of achan uh, santa cruz martama church you so grew up there all yeah. your life my sunday school was in gorega martama church oh yeah shout so out I... to gorega guys <laughs> gyg <laughs> yes yeah st peter's martama church in gorega great but my all the spiritual foundation was from the st thomas martama church where we had really good uh, clergy mm-hmm. and that really shaped our spiritual nurturing and spiritual upbringing mm-hmm. thanking god for all of them so was it easy for somebody from outside kerala to go and become an achan in the martoma church yeah very tough long history maybe at some <laughs> other time we could talk about it <laughs> trying to become a mallu <laughs> <laughs> so have you become have you converted into a mallu now uh, fraud malayali fraud <laughs> malayali <laughs> You can't get any honest than this, yeah? <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so you're half Mumbai car and half Maharashtrian, half... Uh, no, Malu- no, no, no. Yeah. A total Mumbai car. That's why I said I'm a fraud Malayali. <laughs> <laughs> so we have an Achan who's a fraud Malayali who's serving in the Marthama church. So Achan, you've been a counsellor most part of your ministry, isn't it? Yes, yes. Where uh, did you do your education as a counsellor? Uh, my master's in counselling was done at the United Theological College in Bangalore. Bangalore. And then I did my PhD in also in pastoral counselling from Bangalore. Bangalore. Yes. And there was a time where you were in the US as well. Yeah, that was as I worked as a chaplain in the uh, southeast region of the United States. Youth featuring, chaplain. Yeah, youth chaplain. Oh, great. Uh, visiting the areas of Philadelphia, New Jersey, Washington, wow. Virginia. Yeah, that was another phase of my ministry. But church has always been interested me with this chaplaincy youth ministry and which I enjoy and I'm thankful to God for giving me that calling. Yeah. Did you ever get to go on a road trip to all these places? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, been traveling very hectic. Right. Yes. Joe Joseph Achan is a very experienced person who's seen a lot of lives, a lot of youngsters, families, children and all sorts of people and we think he's the best person to answer our questions and uh with regard to Joe Biho we received tons of questions, not tons but uh hundreds of questions mm-hmm. and uh, we hope to answer them through these podcast series. We've already had a couple right now. And today Achan will be talking about one related to church, isn't it? Yes. Okay. Yes. So let's go ahead yeah. shall we Yeah can you read that question please Okay Jim. So here is a question regarding church It's a pretty long one um keep your ears tuned Our church has been reduced to one that places tradition above all else to the point where it has become inward focused rather than outward Especially in Mumbai no one comes to the Martoma church unless they have been born or married into it Isn't this a major problem sticking to tradition even after it has ceased to be relevant in my opinion is killing the purpose of a church isn't it better to build up a community rather than stagnate with existing members tradition may be important but if it loses relevance to the members what use is it 
I personally am a youth who has a spiritual connection with the Lord, but coming to church makes me lose interest in my heritage, especially standing for three hour long services after two hours of Sunday school and followed by two hours of youth meetings. For me, Sunday service has been reduced to an endurance test. I would like this to change. Yeah. Strong words, Achin. Yes, yes. Thank you, Achin. I think this uh, person is very genuine in raising this question. Mm-hmm. And the other part which I noted in this question is this person has a has a committed relationship with the Lord. Okay. And he's taken it seriously with regards to the way he worships. You think so? Yeah. I think one of the questions that he's raising basically is he's understood worship more as a matter of tradition and he's also raised a question whether can worship be just an inward focus why can't there be an outward focus okay and then he also says because of our traditional understanding of worship it has become very arduous quite long and he says it uh, sometimes it goes up to 3 hours of uh, mm-hmm. service mm-hmm. and since he is also a sunday school teacher for him the whole of the sunday goes in the church mm-hmm. so when he is asking what can be done to be what you what can be done to change very relevant question yes. isn't it yeah uh, he starts by saying nobody comes to the mathama church unless they have been born or married into what he said is right but i look at it in a different perspective i believe he is coming to the mathama church because of the faith practices that his parents have inculcated to him okay he had a lot of freedom <clears throat> to go to other churches mm-hmm. but yet because of the good faith practices that his parents have entrusted mm. he's coming to the mathama church right and most of the kids youths are able to come to the church because of the strong spiritual nurturing and foundation that the parents have given to them right. so i look at it at that point of time and i want to praise god for the youth parents who have praise instilled god. into him that spiritual nurturing and good faith practices mm-hmm. but he raises a very good question why can't our worship be just a matter of tradition mm-hmm. why is our uh, worship just a matter of tradition why can't it be more outward focus building of a community rather than just relying more on the existing members mm-hmm. here there are i think we need to understand two three things our worship is basically a liturgical worship right. we base our worship on st james liturgy mm-hmm. if you look very strictly our worship the whole st james liturgy gets over by around 45 to less than an hour mm-hmm. So if it's only worship mm-hmm. you can finish the worship by about an hour mm-hmm. but the paraphernalia in the worship yeah. like the announcements and, yeah. the number of people taking part in the communion table right. and plus so many other things mm-hmm. that literally takes the worship to a uh, one hour one and a half hours or sometimes even to two and a half hours okay depends on the length of the sermon yeah length well. of the sermon number of people participating the number of announcements that has to be done mm-hmm. all these things can literally make people bored while sitting in the worship service so? because yes yes is because, a is a matha machan allowed to say that because when you have announcements that are sometimes not at all relevant to the congregation and being done through <laughs> the pulpit <laughs> people wonder why why did i ever come to church okay i think uh, uh, i need to thank god for our martama church and its members because most of them come to the church with a real intention to seek something new from god okay to get an energizing power for the weekday as they go to work mm-hmm. some truths from the word of god which they can inculcate incorporate into their life mm-hmm. and to get something f- from the worship as a whole mm-hmm. to be recharged for the whole week right and sometimes but then we are also forced to do because there's no other avenue where we can make this announcement right. and i believe the church members needs to also know what is happening in the wider church that's true i mean mm-hmm. you can't just uh, uh, skip those announcements you mm-hmm. can't skip all those uh, uh, bans and the episcopal notices that comes that's a part of being the church in other words that's also part of the outward focus isn't yes, it yes it's part of the outward focus and also a part of the way church functions okay. most of us are concerned only about our parish but we also my need to know yeah my spirituality and my parish mm-hmm. but what is a mathama church does as a whole is something that can be learned when the announcements are made so they're sad, meaningful it has a meaning it is place. it has its own meaning but sad part of it most of the people do not even wait to listen to the announcement they mm-hmm. just want to rush back from the church okay. and here it is little artist but i think we need to be little more patient right in in moving that 
But with regards to worship, I believe the church has given us the freedom to make our worship more interesting. Mm-hmm. We've got certain boundaries. The boundaries are not very, very uh, narrow. It is broad. Within that broad boundaries, our church has given us a freedom to incorporate songs, incorporate new ways to make our worship meaningful, relevant to the context. Mm-hmm. So even in a liturgical worship, this space is there. Yeah, there's a space to make that liturgical worship more meaningful. Mm-hmm. But sad that most of the people do not try that. Okay. Sad that sometimes even uh, we as clergy uh, just try to stick on to the regular pattern of worship without incorporating something new into that liturgical aspect. Okay. And if the church and if we could do that, a church, I mean the worship can be little more wonderful, little more meaningful and more than that contextual. And that's something we can do. And the other part that he rightly said is that Today, most of the members are very comfortable worshipping inside the sanctuary. Mm-hmm. They want to get an emotional feeling of worship. That's why through songs, through sermons. But once the church service gets over, they forget that from worship, we need to be mission oriented. Mm-hmm. What we do through worship has to be reflected in the way we live from Monday to Saturday. Mm-hmm. What we get on Sunday, mm-hmm. the spiritual recharge that we get on Sunday has to be transmitted in our lives into our society, into the workplace from Monday to Saturday. Right. That's the outward focus. But sad part of it, our people have compartmentalized their lives into sacred and secular. Okay. Coming to church on Sunday, a sacred thing. Going to work on Monday to Saturday is a secular thing. Sacred does not mix with the, mix with the secular. And hence, most of the people <clears throat> do not want to have that outward focus as far as their spiritual life is concerned. Hence, as the youngsters rightly raised, We need to teach our members that until and unless you are not mission oriented, the worship that you do on Sunday has no meaning. So it has to be both inward and outward. If you feel, yeah, and if you feel the worship is not very um, uh, appropriate, the worship seems to be a little monotonous and artist, pray, think how you can make those worship more meaningful, how we can participate along with the clergy and the rest of the commu- I mean, the fellowship of believers to make the worship interesting, relevant and contextual to your own way of your life and living. So what I hear you say is every church member has a mission. It's not just the evangelists or the Achans who have a mission. On our weekdays, we have a mission. Can you break down that word for us a little more? Yeah, I believe... God has given each one of us as a calling and Paul rightly emphasized that. If you look at Ephesians chapter 3, Ephesians chapter 4, he literally says that God has given us a calling and according to that calling we are supposed to work. Each person. Each person. Okay. If I have been called to ministry, I believe another person who is a lay person has also been called to do something Wherever Acor- he is. Wherever he is, according to the is. plan and purpose of God. Okay. And that's something that... So that's a mission of their That's life. a mission of that, that person. And we all do this mission through the power and through the energy and through the spiritual uh, renewal that we get when we participate wholeheartedly on a Sunday worship. So it's also about discovering what is my role, for example, in my company or uh, at my office desk or Absolutely out there right. on the field. Absolutely I should be seeking... Right. Uh, so that's part of understanding the outward focus of the church. church. Me asking myself, yes. what is my role as a Christian over yes. here? Yes. On Sunday when I come to worship, I realize that what am I supposed to be, do, to be doing from Monday to Saturday when I'm placed in that particular office or if I'm placed in a particular school or if I'm placed in a particular department. There's something God wants me to do and there's a calling that God has given to me. And that's why I'm, I'm, I'm set apart there. Praise God. Yeah. Yes. So each one of us has a meaning and purpose wherever we are. And it is up to us as a church member to find out what it is in um, asking by asking the Lord and uh, living out that purpose. Isn't yes, it? absolutely. Right. So as a church, how can we uh, incorporate that more into our mission? Yeah, this is something that each person has to think when they come into the Sunday worship. Mm-hmm. You're not coming there to just to be a bystander in the worship. Okay. Right. When you watch a cricket match or when you're watching a movie, Mm -hmm. you're emotionally involved. Right. You're emotionally involved. And many times our members do not get involved in the worship service. They stand as a mute witness, a mute spectator. No. Involve yourself. Ask God, God, teach me. 
help me to learn something new so that i become a better christian i understand your calling as i go out tomorrow to my workplace and when each person comes to the church with this understanding that i need to get something from god i need to understand his plan and purpose in my life i need to know what he expects from me and i'm sure worship becomes meaningful the sermon that the achin gives becomes relevant to him and the way he participates in the worship would also be more meaningful to him and for the community at large so achin you've been telling us so far that church attending or being part of church has an inward and outward focus the inward focus is about our relationship with god and our outward focus is about how we can take that relationship into our daily lives wherever we are placed and the need to seek from god every week or every day what he wants us to do in our respective places yes that's right so achin can we conclude this session by this today's episode by praying for all those people who are seeking meaning uh in worship who are seeking to understand what god wants to do in their life because so many people want to know what does god want out of my life so many people are confused about what their purpose of life is so can we close by praying specifically for them yes god our heavenly father we want to thank you for this uh, opportunity that you've given to us to speak to countless number of your children through this podcast Dear Lord as the word of God says you've given each one of us as a calling help each one of us to understand and discern that calling through our relationship with you and help us to do that calling in the most faithful manner wherever we are placed Father God we thank you that you have chosen all of us to do your ministry and you've chosen everyone whom you have loved so that they could be an instrument in your hands and a channel of your peace bless him dear Lord and reveal your plans and purposes to them so that they are also an instrument to your hands and they also realize that you have called them to a specific plan and purpose come into all of us into your hands through christ our lord we pray amen amen thank you achin thank you very much achin and we've come to the end of another episode of joby ho podcast with reverend dr jo joseph kurvela and uh, We look forward to your feedback and your comments in the for the upcoming episodes we'll be answering more questions that have been sent in. You can go to our website www.gamechangerproject.in and find the Joby Ho tab over there. You can give us feedback or put up your questions over there. Or you could even send us an email on youthministrymumbai@gmail.com youthministrymumbai@gmail.com or if you prefer WhatsApp you could send in your question or feedback to Nine seven six nine three nine one seven seven two. Once again, nine seven six nine three nine one seven seven two. May God bless you. Until then, goodbye. Have a great day. Puchlo tum jo bhi sawal ho, jo bhi.